Man, it looks nasty out there. Rainy days equals movie day. Just finished cleaning up some sneakers, guys. You guys didn't know I'm a sneakerhead. For my long time subscribers, you know I'm a sneakerhead. Right now, by far, my favorite shoe, the Yeezy 350, because it's comfortable and it looks very nice on my feet. I'm also a huge Ultra Boost fan. Had to clean these white ones up. And lately, your boy has been getting into the Vapor Max. So these are definitely one of my favorites. I have another colorway. But shout out to EB Kicks for hooking me up with shoe cleaner. I actually been using this cleaner for two years now and she sent me over like five boxes. Uh, so shout out to EB Kicks. You guys can get this from EB Kicks. I believe they have a website on here. Let's see. If not, just go to their Instagram, go to their Facebook and purchase. Since we're on the topic about sneakers, Let's talk about which sneakers should you purchase or should you invest in for the gym, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you guys some sneakers and for my long time subscribers, calm down. I know y'all like, oh, he's back, Elite Kicks is back. Elite Kicks is not fully back, all right? But we are gonna talk about some of the sneakers that I think you guys should look, look for when buying sneakers for the gym or for working out, all right? There's a lot that plays into it. There's no cookie cutter like blueprint saying, hey, you need to buy this certain shoe and this is the only show you need, shoe you need to buy or purchase for working out. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of things you guys need to need to consider. Sorry if I'm stumbling over my words. I've been busy all morning, so I'm trying to like slow it down. <laughs> so there's a lot of things you need to consider when purchasing shoes for the gym. What are your goals? Um, you definitely need to know your, your, your foot type. So do you have narrow feet? Do you have wide feet? Um, you know, the, these are all things you guys, are you flat footed? Um, for me, I'm flat footed, I have narrow feet. So buying sneakers can be a very difficult task for me, all right? So a lot of the sneakers that I buy for myself are geared towards having narrow feet, uh, which most people feel like maybe some of these shoes are too tight on their feet because they have wider feet. And then also find shoes that feels good for my arches because I have flat feet. So today, sometime in this vlog, I am gonna to talk to you guys about sneakers and show you guys some sneakers. But until then, we're gonna go ahead and get into the vlog. Uh, we're gonna have a good workout today as well. We're gonna hit some shoulders. Um, and then also, I am going to go see the new Predator movie. I will give you guys a rating at the end of the movie. Uh, so I will check in with you guys later on, all right? So I really hope you guys are following me on Instagram and you're tagging your fitness pictures slash videos with Lane Jackson Fitness because I would truly hate for all of you guys to miss the opportunity to win all of this from Muscle Tech. So make sure you follow me on Instagram, guys. Make sure you're hashtagging your pictures, Lane Jackson Fitness, because I would hate for you guys to lose your opportunity for a chance to win almost $250 worth of free supplements and stuff and actual accessories from Muscle Tech. I'm gonna tell you guys what you're gonna be missing out on if you're not hashtagging your pictures for this giveaway. You're missing out on two tubs of protein, chocolate, vanilla. You're missing out on your multivitamin, fish oil. You're missing, you're missing out on two boxes of protein bars, 12 bars per box, 24 bars, a shaker cup brand new, a brand new Muscle Tech hat, and then branch chain amino acids. All right, y'all? So. I will pause the video right now if I were you guys, and I will head over to my Instagram. Link is down in the description, but I will put it right here on the screen. Lane Jackson Fitness on IG, make sure you follow. And also, I will hashtag your pictures. Again, I'll put it right here on the screen. Lane Jackson Fitness. It can be pictures, videos, meal preps, anything that motivates, inspire people to get back in the gym, live a healthy lifestyle. Hashtag it Lane Jackson Fitness, because the winner will be selected from that pool. That's all I'm gonna say. Man, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, temptation is definitely tough. I'm not gonna lie, I broke down in the eight one. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. So, I'm only human, don't you guys judge me. Um, but right now it's 12.30. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the 1.30 showing of Predator. Um, after the movie, I'm going straight to workout. So, what I wanna do is show you guys a tip that I like to do, things that I like to or not things, because it's one thing, but something I like to do, especially on my off days and if I'm in and out the house, um, 
the best thing I like to do is try to eat before I leave. Reason being, I don't want to leave and then get hungry and then have to buy something. And you guys know, when you go out and try to find something healthy to eat, it can be very expensive. And plus, when you're when you get a meal in before you head out or you try to eat something before you go, it allows you to avoid those temptations while you're out, like trying to get a cheeseburger, a pizza, a Chinese food, whatever the case may be. So today, for meal number two, AKA pre-workout meal, because immediately after the movies, I'm going straight to the gym. Very convenient, my gym is next to the movies, so I, it'll take me like two minutes to get to the gym. So I'm gonna have two servings of jasmine rice, a serving of broccoli, and then I'm gonna have probably about five ounces. I believe this is five ounces. So I had this bag full of ground turkey. And what I do is I cook it all up, put it in this bag. So I'm gonna get five ounces. And I'm gonna show you guys what it looked like. So this is what it looked like. This is the other one I had in the freezer. Now I got it thawing out. So what I do is pre-cook it and put it in these bags. That way when I'm on the go, all I have to do is weigh it out, put it in my Tupperware and go. Also, another great investment, guys. Another great investment you guys need to invest in is a food scale. You can find these on Amazon, very cheap. Go to Walmart, probably Target. You definitely need to get a food scale. This will help track your food, how much food you're getting, uh, especially when it comes to protein. You can measure out the amount as far as ounces. See right here, you have ounces. Let's zero it out. So you have ounces. You can measure in ounces and up to pound. Then you can go milliliters, which I rarely use. Grams, I use that a lot as well. And then back on ounces. And I use that mainly for my protein sources and my carb sources, not necessarily for vegetables because to me, vegetables is like a free food, meaning that there's barely any calories in it and it's, 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 it's vegetables, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my food. I'm gonna probably do about five and a half. I'll probably do six ounces of ground turkey, if that's six ounces, and then two cups of white rice and then a serving of broccoli, but we're gonna cook it in the wok. So two servings of rice, two cups of rice. You read the label, it tells you right there, one serving, one cup e equals 142 grams. So two servings gives me 284 grams, 283, doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the microwave, steam it real quick, and I'm gonna also weigh the ground turkey out the same way, I'm gonna do six ounces, and then again, we're not weighing out the vegetables. We'll probably just do like a handful of vegetables. And we have 6.1 ounce or six ounces of 93.7 ground turkey, which I am going to add with the broccoli here in a moment. I'm kind of let the broccoli like get nice and crispy, sear it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna add the uh, ground turkey in. I'm gonna add the white rice in last and then I'm gonna season it up just a little bit. You guys cannot lie. That looks really good, right? <laughs> so this is a very lean fried rice. Again, when I get the opportunity to cook my meals or pan or heat them up in the pan, I like to do that. So we got two cups of rice, uh, six ounces of 93.7 ground turkey and a serving of broccoli with a little bit of seasoning on it. A very lean, healthy fried rice. I like to do this with a lot of my meals when I get the opportunity. And you know, it kind of gives you a different taste even though you're eating the same meals. So I'm about to eat this and then we're heading out. All right, y'all, so I just finished watching the movie Predator. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I give it a five and a half out of 10. I honestly thought that movie was gonna be a lot better than what it was. Uh, but at the end of the day, I highly recommend you guys go formulate your own opinion. For me, that movie had so much potential to be a 20 out of 10. Um, but it is what it is at the end of the day, guys. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. But uh, other than that, we're about to go ahead and head to the gym, train shoulders. Um, I haven't done a video in a while training shoulders, so I'll go ahead, do a video, give you guys some sh uh, shoulder exercises that I like to do, and some that I've been adding into my actual routine lately, all right? So, about to head to the gym right now. All right, y'all, so welcome to the workout portion of this vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are enjoying the vlog. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about the workout, about why I'm doing certain machines, especially for shoulders right now, because I have a very, very annoying pain in my right shoulder. So I started this workout off with um, this cable shoulder press. I started off just doing a few sets, very lightweight, and then this is like my last set. I think I did five working sets. Um, as you guys can see, I'm stabilizing the weight. It requires a lot of stabilization, which I like a lot, and I did not feel any pain. Um, as of right now, I'm just trying to focus on doing a lot of machines and cables right now on my shoulders as far as for presses. 
Um, eventually, when my shoulders start feeling better, I'll work my way back into the free weights. Next, I went ahead and got on this plate loaded machine, which I like a lot because I'm allowed to go heavy and it keeps my form in check and it takes that like annoying pain away from my shoulder. So I don't really feel anything. I just can really work my shoulders the way they need to be worked and I'm not injuring myself or feeling that pain anymore. Um, after that, decided to do some barbell shrugs. Last week I did dumbbells, so this week I wanted to switch it up and I usually go heavy. Um, 225 is normally my max and I just aim for max reps. Um, everything on shoulders, the first three lifts I did five sets of 10 and then getting into the last few lifts of the workout, it was more so around three to four sets, aiming for 15 to 20 reps. But again, when I do shoulder shrugs, I like to do them heavy. Um, I feel like my shoulder, I feel like I feel it more when I go heavy with my shrugs. Next, we're doing this seated lateral raise, which I really like this machine a lot. As you guys can see, I have my arms out. Now they do have handles in front of you that you can grab, but I like doing it this way because I feel like I'm engaging my delts a little more and I feel the pump a lot more. And right now I'm aiming for about 15 to 20 reps with a medium light weight. Next, we're getting into the rear delts. Um, I like doing these on the ground, these seated like face pulls for my rear delts and you're aiming to pull just right at the top of your forehead or a little bit above your head. Um, and you don't have to go super heavy when doing these guys. Um, and you would definitely feel your rear delts engage. If you feel like you don't, if you feel like your back is taking over, then the weight is too heavy. You should not be feeling this in your back. Um, but the, I like doing this with a, a, the rope as well. But today I want to try this straight bar, and I definitely like using the straight bar for this exercise. And you guys should try this out for your rear delts. And be careful standing up <laughs> when you're getting up because that weight will sling you really quick. All right. Um, lastly, we got into this front raise with this preloaded bar, curl bar. I think it's 30 pounds, and again, we're just aiming for reps. At this point, guys, when you're working out shoulders, you don't have to go heavy. You just need to get really good, solid reps in. You get the heavy lifts in with your presses, and then everything else, you're aiming for reps. All right, so I'm whipping up my post-workout meal. We got six ounces of 93.7 ground turkey, a serving of broccoli, and a serving of mixed vegetables in the walk again you guys should really invest in one of these and then i'm seasoning it with this asian seasoning right here and so once this like heats up a little bit more i'm gonna add two cups of jasmine rice make a healthy stir fry again uh, my legs are sore guys train legs two two days ago <laughs> And you guys know how that goes. Two days later is when it's at its worst with the soreness. And y'all probably like, why are you sitting on the ground? And <laughs> I don't even know. I guess because this beanbag thing is real comfortable right now. And I just want to sit on that. But uh, anyways, thank you for watching the vlog so far. Um, I hope you guys have been enjoying the content. So I wanted to go ahead and get into this question that I get asked a lot. What shoes should I buy? What's the best sneakers to, to work out in? Um, what's the best brand? And at the end of the day, guys, I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. There is no answer to that question because at the end of the day, when it all boils down to it, it depends on your foot type. It depends on how wide, wide how, if you have wide feet or narrow feet, if you have flat feet, if you have high arches. So there is no particular shoe that you guys need to invest in. To, to meet your fitness needs. The best advice I can give you guys is go to your local sneaker shop, your mall, whatever the case may be, and, and try on different brands, you know what I'm saying? I will show you guys a few sneakers that I like to use and why I use them. I'm gonna try to keep this very short. So Under Armour is a brand I like to use. Um, this particular shoe I use it a lot for running because it feels very good on my feet. It's a very narrow silhouette shoe and the arch support on the shoe is amazing, all right? Um, New Balance is another great brand that I like to use for working out in. And you know, normally when I buy sneakers, guys, I buy sneakers for two things. Sneakers that I can like go to the gym in and also like, okay, I need to run around and do some groceries or maybe just hey, I want to wear them casually one day. So all that plays a part. Normally my, when I buy running shoes, they're straight running shoes. Like I don't do anything else. I won't buy them and like say, okay, let's go out and eat in them. I may go run some errands in them, that's about it. But I try not to wear my running shoes a lot because 
at the end of the day, you want to keep the wear and tear down on your running shoes, just particularly particularly running shoes. Now, if you don't have the money to have like a pair of running shoes and then another pair of workout shoes, I very I highly recommend maybe investing in a cross training shoe. All right, but again, New Balance is another great brand. Now with New Balance, there's tons and tons of models, guys. So I'm not gonna sit here and say you need to get this particular model. Um, I there's I can't remember one model that I got, but it was amazing, and I could never find it again. But again, it's one of those shoes, it's one of those brands that you just need to go to in store and try on their different brands and see which one fits your foot. Because again, New Balance, are, they design their shoes for running and they do have training shoes. And as you can tell, this is a like cross trainer because of the grips. That's another thing, guys. You can look at sneakers and tell based on their sole what kind of shoe that, sh what kind, what that shoe is mainly geared for, all right? So I would highly recommend checking out New Balance, one of my favorite brands to run in as well. Uh, work out and run whatever uh, Nike everybody's favorite uh, This is the vapor max for those that don't know these are very nice on feet. They're comfortable once you break them in now They are stiff uh, for running. I would not use this shoe at all for running because I don't like running on air units This shoe has a 360 air unit. So this will not be my selection for running but again, like I said, I like buying shoes that look good on feet inside the gym and outside the gym and for casual wear. I can like wear these to the gym and then I can also come home, change my outfit, get dressed and kind of casually wear these with some joggers or all white shirt and, and go hang out with friends, family, whatever the case may be. Um, again, these are on the higher end. Um, I've been collecting sneakers since 2005 and I will say I hate how Nike priced their Air Maxes. They, they keep going up every year. These are almost $200. All the reason I bought these is because I was able to get these with a military discount and still I paid like 150 and I still think that's a little too high for Air Maxes. But uh, the Vapor Max is a very nice shoe, hands down. I give it about an eight and a half, a nine out of 10. Uh, once you break them in, when you first get them, I gave them a seven, but once they break in, the air unit breaks in, they're comfortable. Um, and again, I like them because they're very narrow on my feet um, and the arch support is amazing on these, all right? Lastly, Adidas. Now, I have not really got into Adidas like full line of running shoes, but the Ultra Boost is pretty much the only shoe that I will invest in and the Yeezys because of the Boost technology. The Boost technology is out of this world. I've been collecting sneakers for years and I had I was up to almost 300 pairs of sneakers at one point and out of all, out of all the sneakers I came across throughout my years I will say the Adidas Ultra Boost or just the Boost technology period because they have different models with Boost technology is amazing. It feels good on feet. I've walked two whole weeks between Africa and Dubai. Not saying I walked from Africa to Dubai, but I was on vacation and I took a pair, my all black pair that I left in Dubai. Um, but I walked all over South Africa and then went to Dubai and walked all over Dubai with one pair of shoes and the Ultra Boost was the best. And I always walk around Manhattan in these. Just a very great walking shoe. So if you're someone who, who can't run or who has some kind of issue, fitness, like medical issue, or you have like some kind of issue with your knees and you're not allowed to run or you can't run and you need a good walking shoe, I highly recommend checking out Adidas and check out their Boost Technology lines, all right? But for running, this shoe would definitely be a no-go. I tried running in the last pair I had and for me, it's just way too much cushion for running. So, um, you know, you guys gotta formulate your own opinion. And with all these shoes, I highly recommend going to a store and try them on, guys. Do not try to buy these shoes online just because you know your shoe size. You need to go try these shoes on. Prime example, when these first came out, uh, this shoe is a sock shoe. These laces, this cage right here, you can, you can cut all this off and it, it will not do anything. This shoe is designed. It's already pre-fitted for your foot. So. I like these shoes a lot because it does have that sock foot so or feel to it. So when these shoes first dropped, the 1.0s, a lot of people was complaining because they were too tight. For me, they were perfect. So these are the 2.0s and now they have the 3.0s. So they're a little wider up here. So for me, the shoe fits perfect until it gets about right here. This is where this area of my foot is a little more narrow than most people. So again, I highly recommend trying these shoes on or trying your shoe on before you make your purchase or your selection. Um, I do want to invest in some squatting shoes later on down the road, maybe. Um, I don't squat a lot, so it may be an investment that I might not, it may be something I may not invest in, you know what I'm saying? But uh, other than that, these are the shoes that I, rec these are the shoes that I like to use, and the, the best advice I can give you 
is go to your local sh uh, shoe store, your mall, and then you know try on shoes, just try on different brands, maybe walk around the, that little area in the store and see how they feel on your feet, guys. Um, learn your foot type. If you have flat feet, you need to take that in consideration when buying shoes. And if you have narrow or wide feet, you need to take that in consideration as well. Don't go buy a wide shoe if you have narrow feet. And if you have wide feet, don't go, no, if you have narrow feet, don't go buy a wide shoe. This doesn't make sense, all right? So I hope that was very helpful. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for enjoying the vlog. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Comment down below. Tell me what you think about the content so far. And I appreciate each and one, each one of you guys a lot, all right? Until next time, peace.